I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors. Uh, thank you for joining me in another in this series of insights and advice where I'm having conversations with uh, thought leaders and II leaders and internal audit leaders from around the world. Today I'm joined by two colleagues that I've known for a number of years. Uh, I feel like they really need no introductions, but I want to make sure uh, that I take the time to let you know who we're speaking with. I, I'm joined by uh, Todd Davies. Uh, Todd is member of audit and risk committees uh, and a longtime friend of the IIA and a noted expert in risk management. Uh, uh, Todd, thank you for joining us. I'm also joined by uh, Tom McLeod, who is an experienced uh, CAE, Chief Audit Executive, and experienced Chief Risk Officer, also very noted uh, expert in the risk management uh, field. Tom, thank you for joining me. Now, I first took note that the two of you were almost right out of the gate um, providing a lot of insights on what uh, this uh, pandemic means uh, from a risk standpoint and a risk management standpoint. Your series that you started uh, several weeks ago was really ahead of anything any of us have been, ha have been doing. And I thought it uh, really indicated great uh, foresight on your part uh, that we were entering a, a period where this was going to be a, a, a way that individuals in our field got a lot of current information. So the, the service that you've been providing, uh, the two of you through your regular uh, conversations, I started to say weekly, but in some instances they've been more frequent. Uh, I think they've been incredibly valuable, incredibly insightful, and I just want to thank you publicly uh, for the service you've been providing. Thanks, Richard. And that means a lot. So you both have a, a very, very deep background in risk management and also uh, very seasoned uh, internal audit um, professionals with executive experience in internal audit. You know, one of the things that internal audit leaders are struggling with in this uh, current environment is how best to step up and demonstrate the value that their organizations need. Uh, executive management is often very busy, almost too busy to look over their shoulder and ask anyone for uh, input. Uh, but yet, chief audit executives are, are really well positioned, I think, uh, to provide that advice. Could I ask the two of you to share with me, what advice would you give a chief audit executive uh, in the environment we're operating in that would allow them to connect with uh, with management and their board and demonstrate the value that internal audit can bring. Why don't, why don't I, I ask you to kick that off, Todd? Yeah, great. Thanks, Richard. Um, you know, it, it's something we've all been grappling with. A lot of my audit committees are, are government led, so they're, they're not part of the board and the decision making uh, framework. So our value proposition is almost identical to the internal audit proposition. And, um, you know, we've had to sell right now to get executive time and executive attention. Um, from my perspective, uh, the three things I'd really like to, to draw on, um, I, 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 Richard, I hope you don't mind, I, I dug your book off the, off the bookshelf and there's this great diagram in here, uh, which I would refer people to, which is the value proposition. There's, there's three circles, I'll, I'll touch on those. Um, but it refers to insight, objectivity and assurance. Um, for me, um, assurance has really been an unloved piece and I, I'll come to that. Um, the insight piece, I, I think, is important. Uh, the context right now, things are moving so quickly. Uh, you could benchmark every morning and by the, by the afternoon be out of date. And the, the reason really for the impetus for the video series we did was the insight piece. Um, you know, uh, there's this widespread practice for, for countries and cities that are not in lockdown of red teams and blue teams. So, you know, you come into the office, half comes in or a third, um, they, they're in for a few days, you do the full clean. The next team comes in, you have social integration. You, you know, the in-house team is working with the remote team, emotional connection, uh, psychological support, all those things. Um, you know, we, I first heard about that in early March from a team that had kind of nailed it down in February. And I had other places that were still getting their head around how to even approach the issues. Um, the wave came late here. So for me, insight is really around you know, chief executives are asking audit committees and internal auditors, what are you seeing right now? Um, you know, have we missed anything? What do you think? Um, 
so there's huge pressure on audit committees and internal auditors to come up with that stuff. Um, internal auditors, um, unlike audit committee members, have the IAA at their back. So there's all the infrastructure and the benchmarking and the stuff that I know you're scaling up and have already had in place for many years. So the insight piece, you know, what are you seeing? What's happening outside the bubble? I don't have time to look up right now. Is there anything I need to know? You know, how are we doing here, guys? Uh, and that, that, you know, network benchmark insight, you know, um, even more so than foresight right now, you know, I think it's pretty valuable. No, um, I, I'll come, come to assurance and objectivity later if, if we've got time. Well, I think you, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think uh, uh, the, the, this is a, a period that is so dynamic that you really can't look too far ahead because no one even knows what next week is going to bring. Tom, your thoughts on this topic? Yeah, I saw a great description a couple of days ago where someone said that uh, the March was the explosion of COVID. And we're now wearing the shock waves, the sound waves of them. But normally and when there's a crisis, it happens within an organisation or at most a sector. But now it's happening in all, every organisation, in every sector, in every city, in every country around the world. So the shock waves are actually hitting back against each other. And from a, a broader risk perspective, that is uh, unique. It's, none of us have ever experienced that before. So then what is the role of internal audit in that capacity is a most fascinating discussion. But it's three things that I would call out. One is what uh, we've already talked about, is the ability to look around and see and be the eyes and ears of the whole of the business or the leaders. Um, so that's the first thing. And I think that internal audit's always done that very well. I think the second thing is that the very network that internal audit and the Institute of Internal Auditors have developed over now decades, is we are, this is the very moment. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for where all of a sudden, the person from banking will ask someone from mining what they're doing and someone from manufacturing. And we understand the um, base level importance of assurance. And I think the third thing is, is being very flexible in what we are doing as internal auditors. And by that, I mean flexibility of the audit plan, first and foremost. But then secondly, it may be uh, that we are being asked to do immediate spot checks. You know, many organisations are helping out their, their employees. Um, and that obviously has a, a, a higher risk of fraud or other uh, misadventure. And so it's doing very quick reviews um, and turning those around. So I think that this is a moment that is perfectly placed for a, a good internal auditor. I think it's a moment that is perfectly placed for someone that is passionate about understanding how risks reverberate through an organisation. And I think this is a moment in time where the infrastructure of the Institute of Internal Auditors is globally um, is just going to come to the fore because everyone will be able to reach out to each other, formally, informally, just to understand what it is that these shock waves are going through and what will happen when these shock waves continue for, have, for however long that may be. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I, I hadn't heard the shock wave analogy, but I think it's absolutely spot on. You know, since, since I first started to uh, uh, focus on risk management myself many, many years ago. I've always felt that the, the sort of the, the, the center of the risk management universe was Australia because some of the most advanced thinking around risk management was coming out of, of, uh, of the land down under, as we call it. Um, you, you are two very noted experts in risk management, uh, great, great background, great experience. I, I guess I can't help myself. I need to know what about this experience has surprised even you uh, that with, with all of your, your seasoning and risk management and all your knowledge in it? What about this whole entire COVID uh, experience has surprised you the most? I, I, I might ask you to go first, Tom. Yeah, look, the, um, the, the thing that has surprised me is the extre extremities of it. Um, we have all done scenario testing for the 10%, 15% loss of market share or audience or um, brand recognition of things of that nature. But in some instances, and in many industries, we're talking 99% or 100% loss of business overnight. That has really surprised me um, uh, and has caught me somewhat off guard. Um, but I think that what it has shown is the ability of risk to flex, um, uh, the, the, the function of risk, uh, the, the framework of risk, the intellectual thought of risk to be able to flex. I think that one of the things, one of the benefits that Australia has always had is because we are an island, 
Um, and, and I say that in great respect to Australia, we've all been able to look you know, intellectually and now we're able to look physically uh, elsewhere to see how other all, um, uh, countries are actually operating. And I think that's a very good lesson for us all. Again, I come back to the point of reaching out and seeing how others are actually doing it. And look, the final thing that I would say that does not surprise me, Richard, it does not surprise me at all that the leaders of risk and audit over the last 20 years are all standing up at the moment. They are a cohort that was born of um, the dot-com boom, that saw the uh, global geopolitical disruption of September 11, that then woke up after that and were hit by the GFC. And we are now, as a cohort, very experienced in being ready for things, um, not necessarily of this scale, but we have, uh, have trained and trained well. And I think that's a great credit and a great reminder that the, the good internal auditor is the eternally trained internal auditor. I think it's, again, very, very solid point. How about uh, your view, Todd? What has surprised you the most uh, from a risk management perspective with what's happened over the last two months? Yeah, um, thanks, Richard. Um, I think for each of us, you know, when, when you hit with a profound shock, you try and reference back to something profound that's happened in your life. Um, for me, it was September 11. Uh, you know, I live, it's part of the ground zero area and, um, you know, kind of uh, ran through that. So for me, where my mind went to was 90 days after, uh, you know, 100 days after as opposed to the initial shock. Um, I think for me, the, the surprising elements uh, are just the unevenness, I think, that people are experiencing. You know, you get some people like, Zoom, which we're recording on now, they're having boom times. You know, they're scaling up. For them, it's almost, you know, they read the, uh, the Uber playbook, which is we need a disruption to scale and, and everyone's on that in tech. Yeah. Um, and you get others like airlines who are struggling to stay alive and that, that'll have uh, ripple effects. Uh, you get households are doing it tough, really tough right now. Uh, you get others that, uh, you know, are pretty unaffected, to be honest. So the unevenness. Um, but I take Tom's point too, that the thing I've been, um, pleasantly surprised by is just how people stood up. Um, just the, the leadership um, that I didn't realize was there is just shone, you know, including from people, uh, you know, and maybe primarily from people who didn't have leadership in their title. Uh, people have really been exceptional. I agree. Yeah. Good points, good points. Um, Todd Davies, Tom McLeod, uh, I could spend all day talking with the two of you because I learned more, more and more uh, about the topic of risk management and how internal audit fits into it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. Uh, I would encourage all of uh, our viewers to tune in uh, to the regular uh, conversations that the two of you have, uh, because I think that that's where real enlightenment around this topic of uh, risk management and internal audit's role uh, in risk is, uh, is being most uh, appropriately discussed. So thank you both. Uh, look forward to having a conversation again with you soon. Thanks, Thanks Richard. Richard. Look forward to it.